Thanks for clicking that thumbnail in today's video. I'm going to be talking about my one year experience with the Stealth Cam Fusion. Is it a reliable camera? Does it take good photos? How's the battery life? We're gonna talk about all these subjects plus more in this video. So before we get the Stealth Cam Fusion review started, I want to let you guys know I've separated this entire video into chapters. So if there's something more specific you're looking for in this video, just scroll along the bottom. You can find that information. You can skip a lot of unnecessary information you don't need. To talk about my one year experience with the Stealth Cam Fusion, I actually have to go back two years because originally I had bought a Stealth Cam WXV and I was really excited because it was the first trail camera I believe that they made where you could get Verizon. As well, it was the first camera I'd ever seen where it would transmit videos. I purchased the camera, did a couple of reviews on it, and then about two thirds to three quarters of the way through the deer hunting season, the WXV just stopped working. I didn't want to deal with it. It was in that rut area and the season was coming down to an end and I was just focused on hunting. I wasn't trying to deal with returning a camera or anything like that during this time of the year. So come springtime, I gave them a call I got on the phone with Stealth Cam. They said that the camera needed to be replaced, but unfortunately they didn't have any more of the WXVs. And I told them I needed Verizon. They had a couple in the WXAs, which basically is just the AT&T version of the same camera. But I wanted it for our UP camp and AT&T doesn't work there. They said we have this new Fusion. So I get the new Fusion. I was pretty excited because I could review a new camera and I didn't have to pay for it. Come to find out the camera did not do any type of video and i was pretty disappointed but i got into the camera and i discovered the camera actually works really well so when i got the stealth cam fusion from stealth cam i can't remember exactly what they were selling for but i think it was around 159 bucks i found them last night from anywhere between 109 dollars to 159 dollars and i think some people left some comments on my video talking about how they can buy dual packs for around that $120 price range, but I'm not sure, so don't quote me on that. So when it comes to the data plan for the South Cam Fusion, the prices range from $5 to $50. At $5, you can get up to 600 pictures per month and 300 previews per month. So it's not actually gonna send you all the previews. So if you want to see all the pictures, then you need to go into your SD card, pull the SD card, and then you can view the pictures from there. As well, you can go up to $10, get 2,000 pictures and 1,000 previews. And for $20, you get unlimited everything. So you get unlimited data, unlimited pictures, unlimited transfers. So for the $50 plan, it's a multi-camera plan. So it separates 36,000 photos between multiple cameras, but you have to have a minimum of three. After the initial three cameras, if you want to add any additional cameras, $5 per camera, but you are still sharing that 36,000 photo limit. With every single plan, you get the stealth cam storage, so basically all the photos will be stored in the Stealth Cam cloud up to one year. Just so you know, with the Stealth Cam Fusion, as well as the other cellular trail cameras from Stealth Cam, these cameras will not work unless you are paying for a data plan. So when you decide you wanna stop paying, you can leave the camera out there. It will probably take pictures until the end of the date that you've paid up to. But once that day ends, the camera will just shut off and stop working. So I had the Stealth Cam Fusion on a new farm for the entire deer season all of 2020. The camera worked great. I was really happy with it. And it made it all the way until January when I decided to turn the camera off and stop paying for data. In April, I started working on a new house and with the new construction and insurance companies won't let me put insurance on the house because it's a remodel, not a new build, which is stupid. I decided to set the Stealth Cam Fusion up in front of my garage because I knew it was a reliable camera and with construction crews and myself and other people working on the house, I wanted to make sure that I could keep all the materials close by so I kept them in my garage that had already been broken into multiple times. To reset the Stealth Cam Fusion up, all I had to do was go into the Stealth Cam Command app, hit reactivate, and that was pretty much it, kind of. It ended up not turning back on, but I, called Stealth Cam. I talked to the customer service. Within five minutes, they had the camera going. There was just a firmware update that needed to be done, and that was it. So as far as Stealth Cam's customer service goes, I've always been able to communicate with them pretty quick. I will say the two times that I called Stealth Cam, it was in the spring and the summer, probably not the highest activity in the customer service department. 
So I can't tell you what it's like to talk to Stealth Cam's customer service, you know, in the fall when they're probably getting bombarded by tons of phone calls, you know, if the cameras aren't working or there's some issue, they're probably getting a lot of calls because that's when people are using the cameras the most. As far as the trigger speed on Stealth Cam Fusion goes, I rarely ever get blank images in my camera. If I do, more than likely it's a bird or a squirrel in tall grass that I can't see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk out about 10 yards out of frame and then walk across and see where it picks me up in the lens and then I'll do the same for 20, 30, 50 and then I'll go out as far as I can in front of the camera and walk towards the camera and then we'll see when it picks me up. So yeah, that's, that's it. So I have the camera set to instant and it's taken well over two minutes before the images actually come to my phone. As of right now, I've only got the 10 yard image sent to me. So as you can tell by the image downloaded from the Stealth Cam Command app, it picked me up pretty quick. I was in the beginning of the frame walking by, but it did not pick me up in the second two images, which is kind of weird because I thought maybe being a burst would be one, two, three, you know, so I don't walk that fast. I'm not a fast person. But if you look out when I go to 20 yards and 50 yards, unfortunately, you don't see me come up at all. I didn't even trigger the camera. When it comes to transmissions with the Stealth Cam Fusion, you're in that two to three minute range. So I was asked if I would use this for security. My answer is yes and no. It just depends on what your situation is. If you are setting this up and you don't intend on stopping a theft from happening, you just want to have the evidence, you know, to show to police or whatnot, then the camera will work. It's reliable enough that you know you're going to get a picture of, you know, a thief taking your stuff or whatnot. But if you have it set up in a crash and grab situation where you have it, say, mounted above cars or in front of your garage door, it's not going to be quick enough to get a transmission sent to you where you could actually stop the theft from happening. As far as the Stealth Cam Fusion's picture quality goes, you can take pictures from 4, 8, 16, or 26 megapixels. It does have good picture quality. You know, when you look at the pictures, you know, on the SD card, the picture quality is, is really crisp. There's a lot of detail in the images. I mean, you can see all the individual hairs, you know, on the deer. You should have no problem counting points. While I do get a lot of good pictures, I also get a lot of overexposed pictures on really bright sunny days. So with that overexposure, you're going to lose a lot of detail in your images. Now, show cameras aren't made for photography. You're not trying to put these pictures up on your wall. You know, I did see somebody on Instagram last year made one of those blankets at Walmart out of one of their trail cam pictures, but you know, that's cool. So as far as the pictures on the app, the pictures are pretty good. I can see quite a bit of detail, but if it, at night, if there's a deer off in the distance, you know, it's, it's pretty tough to see them on the phone, especially if they're right at the end of that infrared light, you know, then you can get into the SD card and you can get a little more detail. The night pictures are decently well, you know, up to about 30 yards. I would say you can get enough detail to see what the actual deer is or, or any animal, you know. I guess everybody uses these for different purposes, but for myself, I'm mainly using them for white-tailed deer hunting. For the Stealth Cam Fusion's battery test, I did two. I did one when the images were being sent to me instantly, and then I did one when the images were being sent to me hourly. When I was getting transmissions instantly, I received over 900 images. When I'm talking about instant transmissions, I'm literally saying every single time a picture was taken, it sent the picture to my phone. When it came to receiving hourly transmissions, I received well over 5,000 images on one set of batteries. Depending on where you have this camera set up, you know, 4,000 images can cover an entire month. But in situations like this farm, I can get over 4,000 images in a week. So I hook up the HME battery pack with the solar panel built on, and I haven't changed batteries in a year. What I mean by instant and hourly, if you don't already have this camera, you can set it up so that when a picture is taken, it will send it to your phone instantly, or you can just take a bunch of pictures for an hour and then have them sent to you hourly. Now you can also do this once a day or twice a day, or you can do the thing called instant group where it takes a bunch of pictures. If there's 
like a bunch of deer in front of your camera and they're just constantly moving and just keeps taking those pictures and then as soon as they leave it will send you those pictures after i was done testing i used the hme solar battery pack it only came disconnected once probably the fault of a bird or a squirrel but i only had to change my batteries one time the entire deer season last year after i was done doing my battery tests so is the stealth cam fusion reliable now i only own one and I don't actually know anybody else that owns one personally, I should say. I can contest with my experience that this camera is reliable. I never had any problems with it losing communication or not changing its functions when I ask it to change its functions. It just always worked. Now, feel free to leave a comment if you've had a different experience than me. You know, go into detail and let people know what your experience is with the Stealth Cam Fusion. I'm gonna go into the phone I'm gonna go into this camera, and as you see on the top, I have three new images. These sandhill cranes are there all the time. You can see that my battery life is full, my auxiliary battery life is full, and then I have three bars of signal, and then 4% battery, or 4% of my SD card has been used. So with this Stealth Cam Fusion, I am currently shooting 26 megapixel images, and I have a 16 gigabyte HME card inside. That's one thing I will say with the Stealth Cam Fusion, you need a full size SD card. If you don't have a full size SD card, it interrupts the transmission and it will just cause it to have different faults. With a full SD card, it doesn't have to be Stealth Cam or HME. I just like to buy those because I find them everywhere and they're cheap. You can usually buy like a four pack for 20 bucks. For some reason, when you go into the camera, this usually this main photo here is the last picture that was taken. But then from time to time you go in there and it'll be a different picture. And it'll do a little confusing because you'll be like, oh, I got a new picture, but you don't. It's just an older picture and for some reason it wants to show that one off. But you can click on the picture and then you see there's a bunch of different images and then you can do a nice slide like an Instagram feed or you can do a checkered feed and then you can do a really checkered feed and I find that doing it like this, I, I like to use the Instagram style feed when I get new images, but like when I'm trying to find an older image, it's easy to just click on that nine, you know, the little nine square box up there. And then you can just go through, find that image you were looking for and so on. Last year, I thought that they allowed you to do HD image downloads with this camera. I must be mistaken. I thought it was something they added later on in the year, but I guess, I guess they didn't do that. But they did upgrade their, you get better picture quality sent to your phone now than they used to. So this is strictly an image sent to the phone. There's no HD download or anything. And it's pretty good. I mean, you can see the spots on the deer and then you can see on the back of that doe there that she's got a, some kind of scar. I've seen her a lot this year, so I've noticed that kind of stands out. Now this is a feature that is new this year, I believe. I don't remember using it last year, but if you click the little three circles up there at the top, it adds some kind of filter on there and it adds a little bit of color. And I found that it kind of adds a little more detail. Like if something's a little bit farther away, you say for instance, there's a you know nice white-tailed buck that's a little bit farther away, you can see it a little bit better than you could without the filter on. Here is a, a buck that comes in. Then you turn the filter on, you can see it's brown. You know, it, it, it's, it's pretty neat. I mean, it's a neat little trick that they have. I don't know how they do it, but you know, it's, it's not perfect every single image. You know, like there, the deer look black. There, the deer's brown. This one here looks orange. So it's, it's just a new little thing that they added. But if you want to save this, I'll save this image, hit the star. And then you can go into filters up at the top and then now you can select buck. How accurate is the filter? Let's take a look. So there's a doe. I think it just depends on how the ears are on the deer. Like if they're up, it it's usually picks that up and considers that a doe. But for the most part, this is pretty accurate. I mean, here's a couple bucks in the background. You know, there's the little buck there. I would say 80% of these pictures are actual bucks if not more than 80%. And then you add that filter. So you add a little more detail. That buck's off in a distance. You can tell a little bit better. You can tell the separation from the fence row and then the antlers. 
that's pretty much all there is new for the command app. I don't have anything but deer on this camera, so I can't filter out boar or a bear or elk or anything like that. So let's talk about the good parts of the Stealth Cam Fusion. First is the reliability. It's a very reliable camera, at least from my experience. The picture quality is good, not the best, but I would consider it more good than bad. And then the battery use for a cellular trail camera, I think that this gets really good battery life. Also, it seems to work very well with the 12 volt solar panel box. So it's always a good thing to have. It's worth the extra money because you don't have to buy batteries. Let's talk about the bad side of the Stealth Cam Fusion. For me, at this price point, this camera should have video. Whether it transmits it or not, it should at least have video. While I would still consider the photo quality of this camera to be more on the good side, we do have those overexposed images. The most disappointing part of this trail camera for me is the fact that I have to pay in order for the camera to work. Now I understand paying for services, I don't have a problem with that. But if I want to use this trail camera in the off season, when I'm not really worried about spooking deer or anything like that, I should be able to use this camera without having to pay for a service fee. If you've ever seen any of my other videos on the Stealth Cam Fusion, then you know that I hate the SD card slot. And it's a stupid little thing that I nitpick about, but it's the fact that if I wanna get the SD card out, I shouldn't have to struggle with it for five minutes while I'm out in the field or in the woods when a deer could come walking through. I wanna get it out, switch a new one in, and be gone. My final flaw with the Stealth Cam Fusion is its price point. I believe it's priced too high. I think that it's more accurate around $80. There's many other cellular trail cameras that do more than the Stealth Cam Fusion and cost a lot less. So what are my final thoughts on the Stealth Cam Fusion? Yes, I can recommend it. Yes, it's reliable. Yes, it's a good camera. But I would say that I could, would only recommend this camera if you can get it for sub $100. I have a lot more camera reviews coming up. I have a couple more overviews left, as well as I'm gonna do some comparison videos for cellular cameras and non-cellular cameras. I have everything from the Moultrie Delta, the Stealth Cam Fusion X, the Spartan Go Live, and the WiseEye Smart Cam, the Exodus Render. As well, I have non-cellular cameras from Browning, Stealth Cam, Muddy, Wing Home, and 8-Man. So I'm doing in-depth reviews of all of these trail cameras, as well as I'm going to be doing comparison videos from my high-end cellular trail cameras to my budget cellular trail cameras as well as all my non-cellular trail cameras. Let everybody watching these videos know what your experience is with these cameras because this is my point of view. Doesn't mean that what my point of view is accurate throughout all the cameras that people buy. Thanks for watching. Comment down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. I gotta go.